celebrating the power of possibility. Pilot Flying J and Halloran Hilton Hill present Anything is Possible. Today's guest, Bobby Mays, part two. Welcome to Anything is Possible. I'm Halloran Hilton Hill. Great stories about great people who prove with their lives that anything is possible. There's a possibility for your life. Find it, do it. This is Bobby Mays. We're on part two of his story because it needs a second part. Man, you got a great story. Thank you for being here. Let me kind of give you a, a quick summary. So he was born in uh, Washington, D.C., grew up there, uh, one of three kids. His mother was a single mom. Um, you said something just kind of, that just kind of blew by me. You said when your mother would lose a second job, she would go find another second job, which implies she always was working two jobs to take care of you guys, which is amazing. His mother raised him. He got cut from the middle school team. He had his Michael Jordan moment, uh, and he had a Michael Jordan mama. I interviewed Michael Jordan's mother, and uh, she told him to push, told him to prove himself, which he did. He ended up at Oklahoma. He got injured. He also had uh, the situation with the braids, and um, he ended up transferring to a junior college set records, and we're right at the apex of that story, where he gets a phone call from uh, Gillespie at Kentucky and says, hey, we want you at Kentucky. He said, I'd like to take a visit. You don't visit Kentucky. Kentucky says you come, and you come to the promised land, right? right. So he said, look, we're going to FedEx you a letter of intent. We're going to have a big news conference. This is going to be a big thing. You sign at Kentucky. You're signing for the NBA. I mean, that's just how that, that works. So kind of give us that window into what happened next. And so as I'm, as I'm going out the house, I'm going out the door, uh, where I live, right across the street was a school and a gym. And so um, me and my cousin was walking across the street to head to this news conference and um, a press conference. And I look at my phone and I see Bruce Pearl, named Coach Bruce Pearl on my phone. And I'm wondering, like, what does Coach Pearl want? You know what I mean? And so for some reason, you know, God told me, answer the phone. So I answered the phone. I said, hey, Coach. He said, hey, he said, listen, Bobby, I don't have a lot of time. He said, I got some good news and some bad news. Um, he said, which one you want to hear first? And I said, you could just, you know, tell me the bad news. Um, he said, I said, but coach, make it quick because, you know, I'm headed, you know, to this press conference. And so he said, you know, he said, the bad news is uh, Ramar Smith and Duke Cruz failed a drug test in the NCAA tournament, and we got those results back. And so both of them have been dismissed immediately the good news is you get to be the starting point guard on a team that just lost in the Sweet 16 to Ohio State. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this can't be happening. He said, he said, uh, yeah. He said, man, listen, you know, we can have you on a flight here tomorrow. You can visit the place. You can look. Just get a good feel. That's all we're asking you is to get a good feel. He said, I know. Uh, he said, did you, did you get a chance to, to really watch it this year? And I said, yeah, I remember. You know, y'all playing against Memphis, Vanderbilt. I remember, you know, Lofton. I remember. He said, just think about it. We got Tyler Smith coming back. We got Wayne Chisholm, J.P. Prince. We got a McDonald All-American and Scotty Hobson coming in at the two, so we're going to be so athletic. And you're our guy, and I'm just like, all right. I said, all right, Coach, I'm going to call you back. And I called my mom, and, you know, she was the first person I called, and I told her about the situation. Coach Pearl called me, and she said, well, did you see Kentucky? Did you visit them? I said, no, I didn't. She said, well, didn't Tennessee just said you could just come down and look at them? She said, maybe you should go to Tennessee, look at them, then go to Kentucky to look at them and make your decision, Bobby, because, you know, how can you make a decision on something when you haven't even seen it? And so I said, you know, I trust, I trust you know, her judgment, her words, because when I didn't, it pretty much came right. back to bite me. So I said, I'm going to go with moms on this one. And uh and I turned around, I didn't go to the uh, press conference, and Gillespie was just calling, blowing me up. And I was just, you know, I, I called him, I said, listen, coach, you know, I'm just gonna go uh, check Tennessee out. And they go, he said, you know, it's a big press conference, you don't understand, this is Kentucky. And I said, coach, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I know I shook your hand, I gave you my word, but I can't go against mom. And so uh, that was the situation. The next day, um, I flew out to Tennessee, and from the time I got off the plane, uh, everything was just great. You know, it wow. was amazing. And, uh, it was, it was uh, 
amazing, yeah, right? He was. And, and maybe that was amazing grace. Let's take a break. My guest is Bobby Mays. This is Anything is Possible because it is. Possibility powered by Pilot Flying J, Covenant Health, Home Federal, and the Knoxville News Sentinel. Coming up. When I got off the plane, you know, the people in the airport, everybody was just like, welcome, Bobby. You know, man, we love to have you. And it was just like, man, how do these people know, you know, who I am already? So welcome back to Anything is Possible. This is Bobby Mays. There was something you said in the last segment. You said, Coach Gillespie is blowing up your phone. And you said, I can't go against mom, right? That, that you, we, when we started this conversation in episode one, um, you said the most influential person in your life was your mother. And she told you to go visit. She said, you don't have the information if you don't go. So you came, you saw, and it was amazing when you got here. So what was it about Tennessee that just cinched, cinched the deal? Because who, who puts Kentucky on hold? When I, when I got off the plane, you know, the people in the airport, everybody was just like, welcome, Bobby. You know, man, we love to have you. And it was just like, man, how do these people know, you know, who I am already? Like, I'm just coming on this visit. Um, you know, I met with the coaches, uh, met with Coach Pearl. Uh, he shared with me his vision. Uh, we kind of connected on a lot of things. And I told him, I said, listen, Coach, you know, uh, I really appreciate, you know, you bringing me here, but I'd love to talk to Coach, you know, Pat Summit. You know, because I know Tennessee from, you know, women's basketball before anything. I didn't know that this was a football program until after I attended school here because me growing up north, we was big on the ACC and, you know, North Carolina, Duke, Maryland kind of grew up on that or Georgetown, the Big East. And so I didn't know, you know, but I knew who Candace Parker was. I knew, you know, Tamika Ketchins and those girls, and I knew, uh, you know, who Coach Summit was. And so I was really intrigued on meeting her. And uh, he told me he can make that happen. And so on my visit, my first day, I shared about 30 minutes, just me and her. And uh, we, we talked about, you know, so many different things. She told me, you know, about, you know, the VFL being involved for life and uh, uh, the community, you know, rallying around the players about life after basketball. If, if I attended school here and, and uh, conducted myself in the right manner that, you know, after basketball, if, you know, it was a good opportunity for me to get jobs and things of that nature. And, and we just, you know, we talked about so many different things. and. And, and, and I kind of like just fell in love with, with the people and the coaches and things of that nature. And so uh, right on my visit, you know, I had committed to Tennessee. Wow. You go Elite Eight, you have an outstanding career at the University of Tennessee. What happened after Tennessee? After Tennessee, I went and uh, played overseas uh, for five years. Played in Greece, Russia, Belarus, Cyprus, Lithuania, Venezuela. In Spain, so I went to some different places there. Uh, Were you disappointed that you didn't play in the NBA? No, really? Felt, nah, I went. You know, it was it was a guy by the name of David Hawkins, which was from my area. That that kind of like as a as a kid growing up watching him play overseas and driving the Bentleys and the Rolls Royces and seeing him with the big houses, I was like, You got this from playing overseas? He was like, Yeah, you know, it's Same tax thing. free. They play pay a lot of money. Um, you over there for ten months, they pay for your house, your car, and so, you know, he basically said to me, like, I'm coming back home with all this money and I'm only coming home for two months. So I'm not spending a lot. So he made it cool to play overseas. So for me, you know, I had a different look at it. You know, I, I looked at where I came from and where I was going. Mm -hmm. And so every year I wanted to play somewhere different and I wanted to see the world. I wanted to wow. see. So you leveraged the opportunity. Right. Yeah. I did. That's kind of smart. I did. And I was. So, so how do you go from that to this love for AAU? Well, just growing up, uh, playing AAU uh, gave me the vision of seeing that it was a big world out there, going to different cities like Orlando. It's Vegas. transformational, isn't it? It's transformational. It's huge because my mom couldn't afford to take us on no family trip to these cities. But the game of basketball and that AAU team that we had, a group of men, young men coming together and, and putting on uh, for D.C. Our team was called D.C. Blue Devils and going to these different states. 
uh, gave me the vision to see that, wow, there's so many other kids out here chasing the same dream. And that's uh, what changed my life for me to keep pushing and wanting to see more what was out there. How many AAU teams do you have? I have eight now. Wow, eight teams. And you've got a vision to build a new facility here because you want them to have that safe place to become. Right, I want them to have the same opportunity I had. I want them to have that safe place. That's what kept me and my friends off the street. And I feel like with a lot of violence that's going on here in this community right now, that you know, if they had that place to go, that it would it would definitely tune down some. You know, I I was watching TV one night and I look up and I see you on Love and Hip Hop. And I see K. Michelle, and I see you, and then I see you on K. Michelle's show. And when you were on my radio show, I didn't ask you about that. You know why? Because I see so much, I see so much potential in you beyond that stuff, right? right? And what really drove that home to me was Juwan, this kid that was killed in the drive-by shooting in, in Danny Mayfield Park. What you said about what that gym in your community meant to you and AAU basketball. It gave you a vision of the world. It puts you in a place where you were around mentors who seeded into your greatness, right? That's transformative. So you've started your foundation and you've been doing celebrity basketball events, giving back in the community. Jawan is in the stands with Zenobia Dobson, um, Zavion's cousin, right? Right. He's at your game. He's at your game because he's getting this bigger picture of the world, right? He's seeing, wait a minute, there's a life beyond what I see. And then this happens to him. When you got the word, how did that hit you? Man, it hit me hard, you know. I was devastated because I remember at halftime of the game, Jawan Smith, you know, coming to me and saying, listen, I got this kid that's 12 years old. Do you have any more spots on your team? Uh, you know, I know this kid's dad, you know, he really loved basketball. I want you to help him out. And uh, just me hearing that from him, I remember, you know, somebody doing that for me and I said. Did you see the picture of him in the paper? He had braids. Right. Right. Yeah. And so I'm, 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 I'm going back to that moment and me telling him yes. And I'm, and, and I'm going back to Jawan telling me like, man, uh, this kid is so excited, whatever. And I'm saying, all right, I want to meet him after the game. And everybody, my aunt actually sat with Jawan at the game. She got pictures of him. My mom remember him. Uh, Allen Iverson, uh, which we talked about after the game, said he kind of felt some type of way because he was signing autographs throughout the whole entire game, you know, taking pictures with everybody. And as he was, as the game was over, he was just trying to exit and get out of there. And he remember uh, uh, the kids' moms saying, "Don't be shy, don't be, you know, afraid. Just, just, you know, take a picture with him, say what's up to him, shake his hand." And he remember that. And as he was trying to get out, he had to turn back around because those doors was locked. And when he turned around, the kid had came down. And he remember shaking his hand, you know, giving him five, you know, talking to him, saying, "Hey, man, you know." keep pushing, you know, keep your head up, you know, that, and that was it, and he got out of there. Wow. And so to him, it was more yeah. like, dang, man, if, you know, he just remembered the kid, you know, being so happy, being, you know, so excited, and, and everyone else that was there saying the kid stood out uh, that whole game, and it was like everybody else had their own encounterment with the kid, but me, who game, you know, he wanted to come to, uh, uh, the person at the game said he was the first one at the door in line. So the people that was that was handing out the tickets, they remember him because he was the first kid knocking on the door wow. at 4.30, wanting to get in at 5. And just to see uh, a kid so young uh, being at the wrong place at the wrong time, which really shouldn't be, you know, you should be safe at, at, at you know, in your community and, and shouldn't have to deal with, you know, guys just getting out doing senseless shooting. It's just, you know, it's devastating and really no words can, can explain it because I'm putting on this event to prevent things to like prevent that, that from happening. And then to, to know that shortly right after my game, it's like, 
man, I wish, you know, instead of playing 10-minute quarters, we could have played 15-minute quarters. Or, just, just keep him there just a little bit. Just keep him there a little longer or, or something. Why don't, why don't we take a break? Because th that'll give us the perfect segue into our closing segment where I want to talk about, I I'm going to use a word with you. Uh, I'll save the word for when we come back. But I, I got a word for you today. All right, this is Bobby Mays. You're watching Anything is Possible because it is. Coming up. Just thinking about my eighth grade team, for example, well, you know, for example, I got three kids from three different environments and I have to get, I'm trying to get the best out of them. Welcome back to Anything is Possible. You're watching part two of my interview with Bobby Mays, and we were just talking about the celebrity basketball game. Uh, young Jawan uh, left and went with his father. His father was going to uh, a party at the park to pick up someone. They were supposedly going to the movies and um, drive-by shooting, and this kid is gone. Um, I, I, I told you I, I had a word for you because you know, when I heard about your vision with AAU basketball, right, and you've got eight teams? Yes. Eight teams, and you want to build a, a wonderful facility that is a safe space. I, you have a calling on your life. Like, this is way bigger than basketball. Like, like way bigger than basketball. Because the hopes and dreams and aspirations of these young men that are in your care really are in your care. And you have been given this special ability on two sides. One is people respond to you. So when you call people that you played with, people that uh, you were coached by, uh, business people in the community, when you, when you cast a vision before them, they show up. So that's the influence on that side. But then the 12 year olds and the eight year olds, those, those little boys, they're knocking on the door. And when you encourage them to push and to be better, you have influence with them. And there aren't many people on the planet that are given that, where you could speak into somebody's life and transform their lives. And that is called a calling. It's beyond success, it's beyond money, it's because you actually are helping people realize the full potential of their lives. Basketball is a gateway, right? It's a gateway to that. Do you feel that? Do you feel like you've been called to do something incredible with your life? Yes, I do, I do. And I was, you know, sitting here as, as you're talking, I was just thinking about my eighth grade team, for example, where, you know, for example, I got three kids from three different environments and I have to get, I'm trying to get the best out of them. I got, you know, Dutton man that grew up, you know, he's living in Western Heights who mom is incarcerated, you know, living with his aunt. And uh, I actually had to go to his school, Northwest, to kind of, you know, just tell him that, you know, I, I wanted him to be a part of my eighth grade team. I support him, you know, whatever he needed from me, I help him. And, you know, his, you know, he told me that, you know, when he, one day he was just out there just dribbling on the court and guys just came by shooting and, you know, he's not, you he can't even go to, to the court in his neighborhood anymore because he's afraid that, you know, he could just accidentally be there and get shot. And so, you know, I have to uh, get through to him and help him you know, become a, a better young man and a better person. And, and, and his conditions are rough. You get what I'm saying? But when he's on the court, I mean, he's an animal. You get what I'm saying? He, you know, he, he's a special kind of kid and he has a gift, but he hasn't seen, mm -hmm. you know, he hasn't seen the outside world. And so now traveling and going to these different places, now he, you know, his teachers and school called me and said, now he wants to become a better student because he know if he's not a better student that he won't yeah. play. Then I have Akeem who came over from Nigeria, who literally got off the plane with just a backpack, who's suffering from, uh, at 14 years old in the eighth grade, mom, dad not here, Cousin's not here, you know, he's in a whole totally different environment. Um, uh, he can't call home when he want because of the time difference. And so I gotta get to him to understand that, hey, look, we're your family here. We want you to talk to, to them as much as possible. But his whole goal why he here is one day 
to to be able to take care of his family growing up uh, in, in in his environment, which was also uh, a tough. But you know, can you imagine being 14 years old? Uh, you can't even fly to see your parents. They can't even fly to see you. They don't have any passports, and so I have to the, 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 to get the most out of him and then help him within school because it's a different. You know, he said, "Man, I went to school in the village, and now their expectations are so high from for me." Because because he's not like I said, basketball is just a gateway to raise a whole group of people out of a situation. Right. So you so you've got young men by name in mind as we close today what do you think is the secret sauce of possibility cuz see th that's my whole thing is if you don't believe something is possible it's not possible right so what makes something possible if you were to give me a, a 30 second success formula what you were taught that you want to transfer by means of this calling to the young guys that you're coaching what's the what does it take to make anything possible you gotta have faith. Uh, you gotta believe. You gotta have, you know, determination. You gotta have drive, and and you gotta give it all you got. You know, you gotta give it every single thing you got. You know, on the court. You know, the person on your right and left, the guys you in the locker room with. You gotta go. You gotta battle, and then you gotta leave it all on the floor. And when you leave, and when you look yourself in the mirror, you satisfied because you gave it all you got. If you gave everything you had at it and it didn't work out what else can you do you gave it your all and so that alone should just be a good good enough to be satisfied you know who you sound like who your mother all right <laughs> bobby mays all right thanks for being here i appreciate you for having me we'll catch you next time on anything is possible